Let's get cracking. <laughs> Crack a lacking. Yeah, you're welcome to start it if you want to, unless you want me to. Um, yeah, sure, but you'd never really my intros never really go really well, so I'll do my best. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome <laughs> to Up Late with Glenn and Chloe. We are a um uh, <laughs> segment that spurs off from the good movie monday podcast which you definitely check out on a monday um you can find us anywhere that you find podcasts especially on newsly um you should definitely well that, go check them out that good movie monday yes but up late no like we're only on youtube and facebook yeah but good movie monday you can you can like I told you it doesn't it doesn't go smooth. I do my best, all right. <laughs> we we used to call ourselves bonus content from the podcast, but I now I'd consider this just a thing. It is up late with Glenn and Chloe. It's just brought to you by thing, brought, man. brought to you by Good Movie Monday. So let's let's say it that way. That's a good way to put it. Bought to bought bought to you the <laughs> That's a great way to put it, but 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 <laughs> It stopped working. All of it just stopped. Just ah, oh, that's okay. Just stopped. Well, has... Hello, how are you, Chloe? Hello, I'm really good. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. We're I have to now. apologize to the people. I'm 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 gonna get better one day. I promise you. I swear. No, you're right. So you know, I I can bring us in pretty strong, and then I just tank, and you carry us through the middle, and then I send us off, and it's like you know. <laughs> I I want to I want to do so well at the intros and I always it's like that little voice in your head that says shut the fuck up honestly <laughs> like shut up you know what like it, when it comes to intros uh 2023 is your year it's going to be yeah. um whether it wants to or not I'm going to make it my bitch fucking a yeah <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on like let's talk about that. let's do it. I want to chat to you about something actually, because we, I, I stopped the messages because I thought it was better spoken um, over the podcast, but All you right. called, you called the Little Mermaid trailer poxy. Now I need to address this because I'm glad I don't you agree brought it with up. you. I'm glad you brought it up because this um, is very relevant to something that happened in the house tonight. So you, you begin and I'll, um, I'll pick it up. Okay. So you, you well know that um, Little Mermaid is, like one of my all-time favorite mm. Disney films tied with Aladdin. Yeah. And I have been looking forward to this trailer and it's only a teaser. So that's, that's completely fine. But I was actually quite worried as to how they were going to, how it was going to portray on screen and getting this little glimpse on the screen of how they're going to visualize things has put my mind at ease and I'm actually really pumped for it. I think it's going to turn out really well. Okay, I'm glad you're optimistic about it and all that because I'm not. I just think it looks absolutely awful. And here's the funny thing. Uh, in, in our house tonight, we're having dinner. And this was like completely unprovoked. Like we weren't even talking about movies in any way, shape or form. And my daughter just sort of says over the table, she goes, have you seen how shit the new Little Mermaid trailer is? <gasps> right, because, well, one, that's her favourite movie as well, right? Little Mermaid, like she can, like you, she can probably sing it verbatim, blah, blah, blah. Um, which I think when you're really, you know, you're in love with a particular film, all the more reason to be a bit cynical when a, a reboot remake comes along, um, just because you hold precious to that original thing. But, and I just said to her, I said, that's funny, funny you should say that because yeah, I've seen it and it is awful. It is absolutely What awful. What makes it so awful for well, you though? Look, and it is only, it is only a teaser. Like, let's put that out there. It's probably what, 30 seconds long at most. And most of this is just, you know, a... a a camera going through the deep sea amongst the coral fish, blah, 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 blah. And then we get Ariel looking up to the light, singing, you know, part of your world or whatever it is. And she looks like a sea urchin. Like she looks like a horrible, um, what's the word for it? Realization of this character. I think they've not done anything to really make her look beautiful in a Disney sense or look um, appealing in any way, shape, or form, I just think she looks like a a barnacle. Like I just really <laughs> did not like how that. And she couldn't sing. And then when she does sing, she puts all the no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. You react all you want. They put the fucking um, vocal gymnastics on it, which then just says, okay, I know exactly how this movie's gonna be. We're gonna get a whole lot of uh, and shit like that. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm going to have to stop you there because I completely disagree with you on this. I think she looks stunning. I think she looks like an amazing Ariel. Um, I'm super excited to see her portrayal of Ariel. I think I think she's going to knock it out of the park and she has the voice of an angel. Like that little rendition that she did gave me chills and I'm not one to blow smoke, okay? Um I'm going to tell you I like it or I don't like it. I'm not going to say it's brilliant right now. I'm going to wait till I actually see the movie before it's brilliant or not. But this has given me a a lot of a lot of hope for this movie myself because just like Aladdin, we were expecting to see it in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think it was amazing, but I actually quite liked it because it was Aladdin, but it was its own spin of Aladdin. So yeah. this is kind of what all the Disney remakes are doing for themselves. Yeah. And I think this is going to do the exact same thing. Except like, it's underwater. I, so she's going to look slightly like a barnacle. Like, come on, I she's mean, underwater. But- I mean, I find it an odd comparison to the Aladdin one simply because the reason that was different, it looked different because Guy Ritchie put Guy Ritchie into it. Any other director probably well, would have yeah. the same. Because you watch that and it's, it's, it is Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels in the Disney universe, that movie. But then you look at Mulan and Mulan was nothing, nothing like the Disney. Yes, because, and you love that movie. Yeah, and the re- that's right. Absolutely. But the reason, I didn't love it. I really liked it. But... The, the reason that movie was completely different from the cartoon is because you could not appropriately do the cartoon anymore. It is culturally insensitive. And so they really could not tell that story the way they used to. That's the difference. It's the same if they did no, Pocahontas now. If they did they, Pocahontas now, that would be different too. They definitely could have added Mushu into there. They definitely could have added the songs into there. They, I, I think you're... I don't know. I don't know. I think you're tarnishing it before you really think about it. That's my opinion. I've thought about it. Trust me. That's that's mildly insulting, but okay. No, but you you you've had it like it a dislike towards it ever since it got announced. You've you've been quite negative towards it ever since it got announced. Uh, yes and no. My negativity uh, contextually uh, comes into the fact that the track record of these Disney live, live adaptations, you know. You get out of every five, you get maybe one or two that are good, and the rest are pox. But anyway, that, this is a good uh, opportunity to move on to the next part of the conversation we had at the, <laughs> at the dinner table. No, it still relates because go go go. Because then also what happened over the last um, couple of days was the Disney uh, Expo, the Disney Twenty Three Expo, which they uh-huh. announced the next twelve months of their slate, and a lot most of it's television, so you know, not that applicable to this conversation, but. Also, my daughter, you know, which I was quite impressed how savvy she was with her take on it. And she just says, Disney are just pumping shit out now. Like they've, like their Marvel stuff particularly is what she was focused on. But she's like, yeah. they they ran out of steam. They ran out of ideas. They closed the door. They really want to wedge it open and keep going. But there's nothing left in the tank. And that's how I'm feeling about these live action adaptations as well. There's just nothing left. And they're just pushing this shit out because they their mentality from an executive point of view as far as i can see is stuck five ten years ago where it was it was hitting the mark and everyone was loving it and i just don't think everyone's loving it anymore particularly marvel i think people are done yeah there's definitely a marvel fatigue i'm i'm definitely with you on that all this like i know we were talking a little bit earlier about she hulk and stuff with the tiktok filter but she hulk does not tickle my fancy whatsoever i don't care about she hulk and all these other Marvel movies that are coming out, I just I don't care right now. They need to give it a break. They really yep, do. Yeah. And some context there. The uh, the She Hulk conversation was before we were recording, so people have yeah. no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. Well. Anyway. Cool. Well. Let's. I mean, as all of these conversations, you know, conclude on this show, we will wait and see. The proof will be in the pudding as to whether we like these things. but we're really, now I with... really hope you end up liking it. And I really, really hope that yeah, Eric's but, hot. I mean, <laughs> I hope I end up liking it. Who would hope they don't like something? Like, that's the thing. Like, of course I hope I like it. I don't know. I feel like you're, you're, I don't know. I just feel like you're too far gone to end up liking it. That's not true. That's not true at all. If something's good, I'll come out and ho- go, holy fuck. How many, I, I mean, so. if, you, if you've listened to the show, which I know you have, how many times do you hear us reacting saying, holy fuck, like we did not expect that? 
And yeah, that's true. Ex- that's true. Prime, that's prime true. example is when the new Child's Play remake came out, we went in guns ho. Like, we fucking had our minds made up to hate that movie. And then we walked out going, well, that was great. <laughs> that was fucking great, you know? I hope it happens. And I think it's just from a purely selfish point of view because I love I love it so much. So I think it's just purely selfish that I just want you to like it so much, I think. Well, I hope so. Um, anyway, there we go. Anyway, that's a long time on Ariel. <laughs> that's fine that took 10 minutes can you believe it um what else i wanted to oh yes i saw the like the little snippet you sent me of the premiere of the weird owl movie Uh, how good was that premiere if every premiere was like that it'd be newsworthy wouldn't it yeah well that was a good one i mean a lot of premieres kind of are like because you know on the show we do go to a lot of them and they are super super fun and they what was the what was the one that was really fun fuck it was like a it wasn't um the great gatsby but it was a period piece like that I can't remember oh that. okay last year or something um but they pulled out all the stops they had all these like classic rolls royces pull up and then there was like this theater stuff going on inside the foyer and yeah it, these things are fun granted in hollywood they up the ante and that looked fun because that looked more like it was a lot of fans as opposed yeah, to actors right. you know, exactly quiet. Um, but yeah, no, that looked totally fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's another one. See what I was about to say with this Disney thing. And now with this, we've got movies that we both have strong opinions on the, the press and the trailers for it and the marketing, and we'll be able to have a good reaction session on them. I hope so. I think it's going to be good. Um, yeah, con- considering the premiere and everything, it just, it just seems so fun. And I think that movie is just going to be really fun. Whether or not it turns out to be a piece of shit or not, like it just, whether it, whether it's terrible, it, I know it's going to be a fun time. Yeah. Well, I don't want it to be shit, but yeah, we'll wait and see. And I don't think it'll be shit. I think all of my, um, my cynicism towards it have not been about whether it's going to be shit or not. It's just about whether I think the casting's good. Casting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you see the, the little promo that they did for the new Mission Impossible with Tom Cruise on the plane? <laughs> no, I didn't. Whew. I know how you feel about um, people that put their... Let, let's forget about the Tom Cruise factor. I know how you feel about people that actually invest everything in something and their, their, you know, how far they take things. This is amazing. It is essentially a little sort of, you know, those four-wing planes, you know, those old-style planes. And yeah, got yeah. The top, and he's standing on top of it in the air, right? And he's just sort of holding on like this, right? And he's just saying, hey, Tom Cruise here, like we're filming Mission Impossible 7, blah, blah, blah. And that's you're like, this is amazing. He's on top of a plane. It is really in the sky. And you're thinking, this can't get any better. And then another plane comes in and it's the director in the seat. And he's going, Tom, we need you. Like, you're on. And Tom's like, oh, sorry, I've got to go. And then the plane just goes like that. And he's still on it, like upside down fucking. It was phenomenal. I don't know if the dude's a genius or has a death wish, honestly. Get Honestly, he's look. I, don't, I can't stand the guy, but credit where credit's due, man. <laughs> yeah, he's honestly. Just, and what was it? I think I was watching Bill Maher on um on TikTok or YouTube or something, and, and he was saying the same thing. He's like this. He's the last of the superheroes in Hollywood. Like he's the last of that old breed. Yeah, that just you know put everything into it. Don't need stunt doubles. I just fucking mm, do it. He's he's a he's a movie. He's a he's a true blue. <laughs> actual film maker lover true and you can, true you blue. can he is he's true he's a true blue <laughs> That's a, he's an Aussie <laughs> no no but he like he really cares he cares so much that he does all of this himself because he knows he knows yeah it's gonna make for brilliance <laughs> and good on him honestly you remember- good on him do you remember that song John Williamson sang about about Tom Cruise? No, no. True blue. <laughs> <laughs> Is that about Tom Cruise? That's crazy. I, I find it quite amusing that before we rolled, I um I said, I reckon you've sung a few times on this show, and so far I've done more singing on this episode than you have. I know. So it was subconscious. I wanted to see how far <laughs> you could do it. <laughs> Let's play games. Let's play games. Do it. Let's do it. I've got a few, I've altered our trivia questions a little bit. All right. Um, I have made trivia true or false um, to see if you would guess true or false. And then we've got the new one that we discussed. Okay. Well, that, this is interesting. True or false. I'm wondering if um, 
if you've thought about the TikTok element with this because it's a pretty quick, snappy thing. Uh, and what's been drawing people's attention to, to TikToks is the long, drawn-out suspense. Well, I mean, who doesn't love a quick 15-second video of trying to guess if it's true <laughs> or false? So do you want me to draw it out or do you just want me to... You do whatever you want to do, buddy. You you take it into your own hands and steer the wheel. Shall we go with some trivia, true yeah, or false? Shall we yeah, do it? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right. Well, how many do I have yet? One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six of them. We can try and snap through them as quickly as possible and see how fast you can get them all right. We'll do that because I don't think I have any uh, true or false. I don't. I just don't. So. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have any I just I don't all right I'm gonna go through them really quick then and see how fast you can get these uh, okay and then I won't tell oh, okay let, let's just let's just see how it goes okay ready start the clock it started now um Elizabeth Taylor married the same man twice true or false true Molly Ringwald made four movies with John Hughes true or false false Snow White was the first feature-length animated film ever released true or false true Meatloaf's character name in Rocky Horror Picture Show is Lenny. True or false? True. Sean Connery wore a toupee in every James Bond movie. True or false? True. Speed is the only movie Keanu and Sandra Bullock have starred in together. True or false? False. False. Nice. You got one wrong. And that one was Mo not Molly Ringwald. It was... Hang Meatloaf's on. character Meatloaf. name. Meatloaf. I knew that the second I said it. Yeah. It was Eddie. It was Eddie. It's Eddie. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I changed it only slightly just to see if I could trip you up. But yeah, that's the only one you got wrong. Nice. And um, for extra points, what was the other movie that Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves starred in together? It was The Lake House. It sure was. God, look at you. And Molly Ringwald only starred in three movies with John Hughes, not four. Correct. So there you Correct. go. Wow, I'm impressed, man. Yeah. You're going to have some gold stars and confetti around you at the end of that. See, it's funny. Like, whenever you ask a question in trivia, like a long, drawn-out question, my mind is going in different directions and I can never get it because my mind does go off on different tangents. But if it's true or false, I know the answers. Like, You're really good at the true yeah, or false. I'll do some should, more of those next they week, should I all reckon. be like that. Yeah, then they become really monotonous and boring, don't they? Well, I don't know. But that was, that was good. That was <laughs> okay. good. Um, I'll, I'll fire some trivia at you. Let me just have a look here. How about what movie has the biggest gap between original and sequel? Mm. This record was held by a particular movie up until about maybe 10, 15 years ago. Sequel. Sequel. Um, the record was held until about 10 years ago, did you say? Yeah, yeah, yep. The longest time between sequels. I feel like I know this. Is it a big sort of franchise? No. It's not a big franchise. Okay, well, there goes that. Do you want, do you want to know what the, the, the gap is between, like, the time? Yeah, frame? sure. Yep. 64 years. 64 years. Yep. Yeah, that's a really long time. It sure is. The record before it was held by The Wizard of Oz and Return to Oz, and that was 46 years. Okay. All right. So it's before The Wizard of Oz then? Uh, the original was, oh, no, it would have come after. Was it like a Herbie movie, like Herbie Fully Loaded or what? No? Okay. No. That's a, that's a really good logical guess, though. Um, it's, it's not. It's not like that. But that, that that was a really good guess. And it it look there is a connection there because it is Disney. It is Disney. Okay. Um, is it like? Oh, I was going to say, is it like British? Is it a British style movie? No. no okay. It's animated. American. Animated. I feel like TikTok's yelling at me again. Like they know it straight away. And I don't know I if they will. I, I don't know if they will. And they might be lying to themselves if they think so. Um, did you say it was animated? Mm -hmm. Cinderella? No, that's a really good guess too. It was Bambi. Oh, wow. Okay. How many there years you did go. you say? 60... 64. Wow. Between yeah. Bambi 1 and Bambi 2. Yeah, right. 
Very interesting. And then and think about it, because Bambi 2 came around at a time when, uh, it's called the Bob Eisner years of Disney, when he introduced all of these new director video sequels, because he mm-hmm. realized that we can make these fairly inexpensive and there's already an, a, a very popular film attached to them. So let's just do a part two real quick and get them out. So you had um, Cinderella 2 and 3 and you had Lion King 2 and all these, Aladdin 2 and 3. And Bambi was another one. So you wow. know, it was just... Okay. Easy for them to do, you know. Let's do Bambi too. Why not? Makes sense. Why not? Yeah, everyone knows. Everyone knows Bambi. Just whack another one out there. That's right. I've got another Wizard of Oz one for you, real quick. A lot yeah, of people go. know this one. I'd be interested to know if you do. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the snow in the Wizard of Oz made of? You know, when they arsenic. No, that'd be fucking lethal. It was arsenic, wasn't it? It was made. It certainly of... was not because not they would arsenic. Be... Asbestos. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I know this. I'm telling you the truth. No, asbestos. Yes, yes, I knew you knew it. The second you said arsenic, I knew you knew it, but it was too fun not to let go. <laughs> they used to put arsenic in makeup. They put a lot of things in things. That was just rude. Like, we put that on our face, guys. You put Definitely lead in stuff all the time. Make, make, makeup had lead in it too. Yeah, they just, you guys just wanted to poison us and keep us subtle. Do you want to take it there, do you? All right. Not yeah. anymore! <laughs> <laughs> there goes half our audience. <laughs> you just got political. <gasps> what if, guys? What if? That's about as political as I get. I'm not very. I'm not All right, very what else are we doing? You said there was something else. Our new one, our new game that we were going to play. Yes. We no, haven't yet informed the audience. But. Okay, well, this was my idea. I thought it would be fun at the time. And I will just uh, preface it by saying that I've only got three of these. I uh, didn't really put a lot of thought into it. Um, <laughs> I was hoping that you'd have at least three as well. So we'll see how we go. But it's a would you rather. It's simple. I got four. Cool. A would you rather. And uh, then I reckon when we say we would or wouldn't rather, we, um, we justify it or explain why. Yep. Cool. Right. So you've got four. So do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. I can go first. All right. Um, I'm going to start off with a controversial one. Ooh. Jennifer Aniston or Angelina Jolie? Okay, in that sense. There is there is a right and wrong answer to this, by the way, just so you know. Okay, so is it in that sense or is it dinner? Like Just, just in who reference? would you rather? Okay, who would you rather fuck? Okay. Well, not necessarily fuck, just... <laughs> well, that's what I was implying when I'm saying oh. like that. And you're like, God damn it. Like, you can, in that sense, if you like, just... This is a very odd one because I find neither of them that attractive. I think in classic Hollywood sense, maybe people would think Angelina Jolie is sexier. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think Jennifer Aniston is sexier. Um, probably Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, that's the right answer. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You, I prefer, it was. I much prefer her shape. You know, a bit more voluptuous, not so rakey. Um, and of course, I'm talking about fucking. Yeah, and she's just a little less cunty as well. You know. <laughs> yeah, totally. But then you've got the lips. Don't care. She's. Just... If, if you're a guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's how it's gonna be, all right. Well, hey, you wanted to you wanted to do Battle of the Sexes before, so I'm just throwing some in there. That's all right, fair game, man. Fair game. All right, so my turn would be would you rather a legitimate Goonies sequel with the original cast and a good story, or an an actual adaptation of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child? Oh my god. See, I, I played to your weaknesses. An actual Goonies sequel with all the original characters, yep. a good storyline, like worth making a sequel, mm-hmm. or an adaptation of the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Oh. Done very well, too. Like, both of them done very well. Both of them live up to your expectations. That's the That's the issue. That's the yeah. issue. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna have to. 
I have my reasonings for this, okay? okay. I'm going to have to go for the Harry Potter route and I'm going to tell you why. Because the Fantastic Beasts movies, I actually really do quite enjoy. I really like them. I think the world is still extremely magical and beautiful and I think I think they could make a cursed child movie very long the same aspects and I'd be really happy with it because on the other hand if they did do a Goonie sequel I just I just don't know it gives me anxiety thinking about it just so you know <laughs> it's such a weird thing I would have to go the Harry Potter I'd have to go really? even though route. both of these possibilities would exceed your expectations exceed my expectations so you didn't say that i did i'm pretty sure i did because oh. when i said that you said that's the problem <laughs> anyway I, you've answered and now you're going to be up all night thinking about it oh you <laughs> fucked me over on that one i'm gonna i'm gonna keep that but it's gonna be at the back of my mind okay i'm right. gonna keep the harry potter but it's gonna be it's gonna be there <laughs> awesome your turn Okay. Um, who do you rather? And this isn't to fuck, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So you need to, need to <laughs> clarify this stuff. Corey Feldman or Corey Heim? Heim. Heim. Well, it even feels like Heim is another thing. Um, oh, that's... <sighs> Very hard. That's a really hard one for a number of reasons. I mean, is there like what's the context here? What would you rather? But like, in what context? Would I rather? Whatever, con- whatever context you want. I mean, would I rather Corey Feldman died, or would I rather? Um... That's harsh, <laughs> Jesus. Well, I'm trying to no, figure out. Like, like, I mean, if you, you had know. to choose between watching a movie that starred Corey Feldman or Corey Haim. Haim. Oh, well, that's easy. If I had to do back a movie, in, Mar- back in the I- prime time heyday. Yeah, well, firstly, they made a bunch of movies together, so I could kind of just cheat and know. say, you know, no, yeah, don't like, cheat. Okay. No, there's no right. cheating. Corey, Corey Feldman by a by a mile because I think uh, in his heyday he made better quality films consistently. Mm-hmm. You, know, you had your Gremlins, you had your Goonies, you had your Stand by Me, you know, all that kind of stuff. Whereas Corey Haim had, um, yes, he had Lost Boys with the other Corey, but he also had like Lucas, which is meh. Eh. He had Silver Bullet, which is great. But, yeah, I think the consistency of Corey Feldman in, in the 80s was just. If you got to interview either Corey Feldman or Corey Haim. Corey Haim would be far more, in- uh, no, Corey Feldman would be far more interesting. Yeah, so you're going to choose Feldman no matter what. Uh, probably, although I listened to Corey Feldman's Steve-O interview and it was frustrating. So. Yeah. Yeah, he just, um, I think maybe, maybe it was more frustrating on Steve-O's part because he wasn't taking the really serious stuff seriously. I think Corey Feldman was trying to do a deep dive into the allegation stuff and uh, and, and the, the cause he's been trying to drive and Steve-O was uncomfortable with it, so he made light of it all the time um, as a bit of a tangent there. But yeah, look, I'm going to go Feldman. Yep, fair enough. Okie dokie. So another good one here. I reckon I know the answer though. Would you rather... Going back in time, attending the world premiere of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Ooh. or the world premiere of Pulp Fiction? Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's it's going to have to be Pulp Fiction. Why? Well, because you got Bruce, you got John, you got Quentin, you got Uma, you've got Sammy, you've no, there's yeah. just no, there's no, there was, there's no comparison. There was Sorry. nothing more rock and roll at the time either, because Tarantino was a rock star at the time. Yeah, yeah, that would have been a fucking party too afterwards. Yeah. Honestly, I yeah, no, that's the right answer. I reckon. Yeah, definitely. But on the other hand, you've got like Alan Rickman, and you've got um, Maggie Smith, and all of that. However, there were a bunch of young kids, so it wouldn't be as fun, I don't think. Um, they would have more just been annoying, I and think. And tell me, back like, then. I don't think Maggie Smith would be that fun to hang out with. Oh, who knows? She might be a bit of a, she might be a hoot. 
You don't know. Right. But well, yeah, I have seen uh, I have seen I have seen Tea with the Danes, and she's a little bit fun in that. All right, what do we got next? Yours. All something? right. Um. um I mean, you, you, you're going to be doing both anyway, regardless. Okay, so you have to choose one or the other. You can only watch their movies, and you can't watch the other the other person's movies. Okay. All right. Mike Myers or Adam Sandler? Adam Sandler. That was pretty easy, though, wasn't it? But you got to remember, like Shrek. You don't love Shrek that much. No, I don't. I don't love Shrek that much. I, I think that Adam Sandler has just a far more diverse catalog to to, to jump into. So if you get bored with the comedy, you got the drama. When True. Mike Myers does drama, there's not a lot of it, and he's not a main character. Um, I think, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I think that Mike Myers. This is a harsh thing to say, but in the context of this and the comparison, Mike Myers is more of a hack. And, and copies a lot of other people as opposed to Adam Sandler. He's very much tapped into an Adam Sandler brand. So he's sort of, you know, forged a character in and of himself as opposed to taking from Peter Sellers or, you know, here or there. Yeah, fair, fair. And, um, and to be fair, I think Adam Sandler is a little bit more quotable as well, which is quite important to me. I love, I love quoting you know, yeah. people like that. And just the other day I got to, I got to quote um, an Adam Sandler movie. My kid has finally learned to to wipe himself. And whenever one of my children learns to wipe themselves from the toilet, I go, I wipe my own ass. I wipe my own ass. And to and think I, before that moment, you were saying, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> wipe your fucking ass. Here's, a, here's an interesting thing for you. I interviewed a lady last week called Lynn Littman. She made a movie in the 80s called Testament. Fantastic movie. It's all about um, nuclear holocaust and the end of the world and what suburbia looks like in that time of uh, fallout. Uh, anyway, there's a scene in that movie where a father is um, spurring on a son and he keeps saying, you can do it. You can do it. And it keeps building to the point he's going, you can do it. And like that's <laughs> that's what Adam Sandler was parodying all oh, through his films. And I, I mentioned see. that to, to this woman. I said, you know that, that the legacy of that line alone is right through that Adam Sandler, you know, um, their little Legacy. universe. Yeah. And and she she never put two and two together. <laughs> and it's her really? own movie. Yeah. Wow, there you go. So yeah. Anyway. Interesting, interesting. I think we've got one more each. Yeah. And then we'll wrap her up. Okay, so uh-huh. would you rather have dinner with Justin Long <gasps> or all four of the main hobbits, Elijah Wood, <sighs> Sean Aston, Dominic Monaghan, and Billy Boyd? This is like Sophie's choice. You can't give me that. I I knew exactly the reaction I was going to get. Oh. Mm, chalky milk. Oh, my God. Wait. And in this scenario, am I single and is Justin single? <laughs> <laughs> this is just the... the, the Very condition- important. The conditions of this is either one of those scenarios. It is simply dinner and conversation. Let's put a three-hour cap on it. We don't want to get you in trouble. Who cares about that? I don't (laughs) care about that. Uh, uh, Fuck you, Glenn. It looks like you got little black eyes, like you got <laughs> <laughs> little beady eyes. <laughs> um, um, Squid Girl. I, I love you, Justin, but it's going to have to be The Hobbit. It's going to have to. I can't. And why? It's Sean Astin and Elijah Wood and Dominic Monaghan and Billy Boyd. I can't. First of all, Sean Astin, Goonies. <laughs> Uh, toy say. soldiers uh rudy no i'm sorry justin no don't hate no Plus, i mean like just sean astin and elijah would combine have so much so many stories to tell plus i was completely in love with dominic monaghan throughout lost um he was just my be all be all and end all through that um i think it was a really hard decision because I really wanted to pick Justin in that. That was I wanted to pick him, but I just I... Well, 
awesome. You've won this game. <laughs> you've got one more to go. Yeah, but you've won this game. Um, we're really on a Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings role. Well, and because my- I'm playing to your weakness. I'm like, I'm trying to get a reaction out of you. But my last one is, if you had to choose, what would you choose? The Harry Potter franchise or the Lord of the Rings franchise? <laughs> that's my last one. No, but that's a really good one because that's really hard for me because um, there's pros and cons to both. So straight away, Lord of the Rings is a is a better made series. Yes. Like it is it's just like cinematically better. Yes. You know, I Agreed. think Harry Potter reaches that consistency only from part three onwards. Correct. Like there's, a, there's a jarring difference there. Correct. But like those, to me, the first couple of Harry Potter movies are actually where the magic is in that series. Like I do love where it went and I like the darker as they got older, it got more mature. But in the original two, it's very much like I think Roger Ebert called it like this generation's Wizard of Oz. Like it had a magic to it that was new. So what's the what's the conditions of this? Like it's just for the rest of time. I, I just dismiss one from my life and only have the other. Is it I'm on an island for the rest of my life and I have to choose which one I take with me? Like what's the, Yeah, what's so the... you've you've crash landed on a desert island and you have a DVD player and a TV, but you only have one set of series to watch for the rest of your life. So I'm just going to be looking at the covers because there's no electricity, right? The DVD works. Okay. You plug it into a coconut tree and, and it sparks electricity into the television and the DVD player. So you can watch them. But you Lord only get to watch Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And does that include the Hobbit series for you or do you completely discount the Hobbit? Well, then we'd be calling it a Middle Earth series, wouldn't we? Yeah, okay, I guess. I'll just, because and yeah, well, look, I, I enjoy the Hobbit side. So let's just stick with Lord of the Rings. I'll, I'll stick with Lord of the Rings. Um, and just before we wrap up, because we're slightly over time, I just wanted to say, have you watched any of the new Lord of the Rings series? I haven't yet. And there's a reason for it. And it's because I really want to sit down and take the time and appreciate okay. it and just really be in it, um, which will probably happen this weekend. Okay. Well, when that happens, and don't forget, I think, is it, is the entire series out or is it dropping week by week? So it might take I haven't even checked. I haven't I even checked. I think it's a weekly thing now. So it might take okay. some time to get through. Once you've finished, then we can talk about it. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. Well, until next week, that was fun. That was fun. Sayonara. Oh, you're ready to go. You're like, you're ready oh, to go. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>